Hello and welcome to the next episode of Uncut Tutorials 2.0. In today's episode we're going to be discussing missiles, specifically missile design, and kind of going over how the mechanics work, what the buttons do, what the knobs and whistles, and kind of giving people who don't really understand what missiles are and how they work a little bit more of a perspective. So the first thing you need to understand, missiles are one of the types of weapons in the Royal Effect C-Sharp. Uh, specifically, they are the opposite to beam weapons, as in that they have certain characteristics that are completely different. Now, while beam weapons, which are carronades, gores, railguns, misons, all those kind of weapons have different variables and different capabilities, they all share a common factor. They can be fired from a beam fire control, and they have a, uh, you know, a range that is reasonably relative comparable between each other. Uh, combined with the fact that when they fire an enemy, if they hit the enemy, it's a hit, immediate hit scan. Okay. So missiles essentially provide the other side of it, with, and they use missile fire controls, and they fire from usually quite great so distances than beam weapons will. This can be from 10 million kilometers to 1.7 trillion kilometers uh, on the more absurd end, for example. You can go from these distances from the right next to each other to very, very far away by using the capabilities that Steve and the game has provided you through missile design. Missiles, however, are similar. They obviously do do that missile fire control, but they also do damage uh, with their warhead strength. But they have additional things like radiation. So what we're going to do is we're going to head down through this window, which is where most of the stuff happens for missiles, and we're going to kind of explain how this works okay so we're going to start from the from the top left we have warhead strength warhead strength is based on your technology so warhead strength if we put one here so msp means missile size point because we have warhead strength of two per msp or missile size point not to be confused with maintenance supplies we get a value of two warhead strength each warhead strength equals one damage okay and each warhead strength also equals 100,000 civilians killed uh, for that warhead strength. In combination with that warhead strength, you also gain radiation damage equal to. Uh, there's an exception this, and we'll get to that in just a moment. Warhead strength is essentially how much damage you're going to do. And as you increase the value of any of these green letters, you are going to increase the size of a missile. We then have fuel capacity. Fuel capacity, pretty self-explanatory. The more you increase, the more fuel that you get. Then you have agility. Agility provides you with maneuver rating, and that maneuver rating increases uh, the hit chance related to actually hitting the target. So you could be a really fast missile, but if you don't have the extra little bit of agility, you may be missing out on 10% hit chance or, or however so much. So you always want to be looking at that agility and be like, can I add a little bit here, a little bit there? and see you know what kind of benefits i can get out so really it's the important thing to understand is the balancing act between these three things and the next thing which we will discuss which is the engine missiles can go from a power boost so this is the engine selection screen for the missiles you do not build your separate engine it can go from 50 percent engine power to 600 percent engine power i believe they can actually go lower than 50 percent but i don't have the tech for it here uh, but the facts are is that they can go two times the normal power boost so in this game, we have a technology of 300% power boost, okay? And this allows us to go 600% power boost. The biggest value you're going to get in improving your missile designs and what makes early missiles so bad is two things. Engine technology is bad and power boost technology is bad. Power boost research is generally cheap and it allows you to get a great value out of your missiles because generally speaking, you do not need significant amounts of range. You then have engine size. This would go from 0.1 missile size point all the way up to, uh, if I just bring this down, 50 missile size points. And as you go up, you use less fuel uh, for consumption purposes. And as you go down, you use more fuel. It's the exact same thing with this. You exponentially need more and more fuel. So 100% is one fuel consumption. So 100% fuel consumption. And then you go up to 60% fuel power. You're going to use 400 uh, 4,400 percent more uh, total amount of fuel consumption when compared to the fuel consumption of one. Okay, so it's a significant, significant difference when you're considering that. And we can see that right now. We go from 
Uh, we're at 7 million kilometers with 600% fuel consumption, and we go back to 100, we have 3.3 billion. So keep that in mind. Uh, over here, we can see the fuel efficiency, the engine cost, the fuel per engine, uh, engine power uh, unit, engine power hour, uh, specifically. Uh, and we can see that over here, what our technology level. It's the same tax you get for your ship technology. These tax are from uh, your missile kinetics research category. And that's what, that's what you need to think about there. We have reactor. Reactor is something you can't modify, but is affected by these, uh, these things over here. So what do I mean by this? If we add an active sensor on, that is going to require a reactor that's going to be built in, which adds additional size onto the missile and also cost. This is the same with thermal and EM. So what this will do is it will provide you with a resolution 5000 sensor uh, or whatever resolution you want. So 10, 100 uh, at the size you would. So this is just a size one resolution uh, active sensor. Um, so that's what you have to consider here. However, uh, it is not as capable as that. It's missile size 0.1, but it's not as capable as a size one active sensor itself. Uh, because its sensor strength is typically, as you can see here, 0 0.05. If we go over to active sensors, we start with an active gravity sensor strength of 10 on a 50 ton. So you are talking about a, realistically speaking, you're talking about an active sensor strength of half of this. Okay, so a 2.5 ton sensor is essentially what you're getting here. This is the same with thermal and EM. They are also reduced significantly. Um, over what you would normally have. So consider that. I believe it's 5% of the total sensor strength per one. Uh, obviously, if we increase this to two, we get one, three, uh, we would need 10. Uh, yes, yeah, 50% really. So if we, if we need 10, we need 20 to get the same kind of active sensor strength, right? Okay. Then we have uh, geo sensors. So these are the passive actives. We talked about those. Geo sensors are. Uh, allow you to build probes and those probes you can then launch towards planets and they will survey the planet. Uh, keep in mind that obviously you need to stay there long enough so look manage your fuel. Uh, each geo point is equal to that much strength so this will tell you how many points you'll get per day based on your tech level. Do keep in mind if you play at a reduced uh, geological survey research speed that that or not geological survey speed a geological survey point uh, generation amount that that may be affected. We then have ECM and ECCM. ECM means that your missiles, when fired at a target, will make the enemy point defense, assuming they have no ECCM, 10% harder for them to hit, um, to hit your missiles. If they have ECM and you have no ECCM, it's 10% harder for you to hit, their, to hit their ship, okay? So consider this whenever you're using ECCM, and ECM is extremely powerful and should be used when you can. This is simply used based on whatever tech level you have, it's just a checkbox. Then we have enhanced radiation. Enhanced radiation is a uh, ability where basically, depending on the tech, you reduce your warhead size and your warhead strength in exchange for radiation damage. It takes 100 years, as far as I understand, for radiation to deplete from a planet. And radiation damage is, can affect your production capability. It kills off population. Uh, and it just messes up the planet. It has no effect on ground forces. Do keep that in mind. So don't assume that you're using radiation against ground forces uh, as any effectiveness. We then have three options. Bombardment pod, also bombardment pod, also cannon pod, and air-to-air -air pod. These are non-expendable missiles. So missiles are expendable in nature, if I forgot to mention that. Bombardment pods, or pods in general, are not expendable. I can go in ground support pod bays. Uh, these essentially can be then increased with pod size and they provide essentially a ground weapon. So like we talked about previously with element weapons and ground forces, this is exactly what you get here. So armor penetration 9, damage 2, 3 shots. And you fit these onto uh, ships with these fighter pod bays and they provide direct fighter support uh, or direct bombardment support with those pods. And the various pods are good at various different things. So also can it's better at doing penetration and is it doing damage like the bombardment pod is the air to air pod is, is more focused on uh sh doing a lot of damage to a single target aka another enemy fighter um and that sort then there is no engine no engine will mean that you do not obviously have an engine however you 
do not ever run out. So what you can do, essentially speaking, is give a vessel like this uh, an active sensor and a thermal sensor and an EM sensor, and there you go, you've got yourself a buoy. So this will sit there on top of a jump point or on top of wherever you want it to be forever, and you can launch out the back of something and it will tell you anything that comes through that area, assuming you've got it set up right. So that is essentially what a buoy is, and that's what no engine does. This is also has to do with missiles, and we'll get to that in a little, uh, not missiles, with mines, and we'll get to that in a little second. Okay, over here, a few more things. So this is all your technologies, obviously. Um, so keep that in mind. Uh, you can see the actual thermal sensor strength per MSP. You can see here, so 0 0.5, 0 0.25, 0 0.25. So currently we get 25% of whatever our EM sensor is. Um, per msp uh instead of you know what you would normally get so we, we get very very little uh so we would need you know a lot more uh dedication over here to actually make that effective this is because our em sensors are strength five right now and our active sensors are strength 10 at the moment so it's basically uh five percent um you get five percent of the strength of the actual sensor uh racial strength per msp all right, second stage. So let's design a missile really quick here. So what we're going to do is we're going to just design a basic missile that's going to have some fuel capacity. So we'll do five fuel capacity. I'm going to take away the sensors. Um, and it's and uh, I'm just going to give it 20 fuel capacity. Uh, we'll give it five fuel capacity and we'll give it uh, a large engine, okay? So we'll give it a size, a size 10 engine, okay? We will instant this design. And there we go. We now have the... Altum missile stage. We then want to add a second stage. To add that second stage, what we will do is we will design a new missile. This time, what we will do, and these aren't good missiles, by the way, I do not recommend you copy them. This is just for an example. We will add warhead strength. We will add in a smaller engine. So maybe, I don't know, a, a, a size two engine. Okay. And we will create that. We will power boost that up to 600% and we will create this design. Okay. Then we will add our second stage as this missile. We will then provide four of its number and this will increase its size accordingly. So what is this doing? First off, our first stage has its range. So in this case, 5.6 billion kilometers. It has a speed and it has a flight time. Once you reach 150,000 kilometers in this situation, that's what our separation range is. Once you hit 150,000 kilometers away from the target, you then release the payload. By payload, I mean the war, the second stage. The second stage will then continue its journey on towards the target and it will attempt to impact. This allows you to create MIRVs or multiple intercept re-entry uh, vehicles. Uh, and essentially, you can have very long range missiles by having the first stage take a lot of time to reach the target, but you fire it from many distances away. And then as soon as it gets close, it fires the much faster swarm missiles that impact the target or impact the planet. And this is how you build a second stage design. Now, there is a way to build mines, and that way is very important to talk about. So we're going to design another missile. We're going to have no fuel capacity. We're going to take no engine. And we're going to have to make sure it has no other missiles. But what we're going to do is we're going to put an active sensor on it. Okay. We're going to instant this design. So now that we have this. And then we're going to, for our second stage, put four anti-ship missiles on. Okay. So what this will do, what this will do is it will essentially sit, you will deploy this in as an area, for example. Uh, let's say near a jump point. The boy will sit there forever. Okay, it will sit there forever. Once it detects an enemy vessel uh, with its active sensor, it will then think to itself, enemy, enemy detected. Okay, and as soon as that enemy is within that range, it will launch its second stage. And when it launches its second stage, it's essentially a mine. Okay, so enemies that come through, launch second stage, mine flies at them and it explodes, essentially. This is what a mine is in Aurora, a space mine, and what you want to be thinking about. So now that we've kind of discussed the mechanics and the very basic, basic ideas behind how these missiles work and how the window works, 
and all that stuff. Uh, let's talk about a few other things that you may not be thinking about with missiles. Number one, MSP is what matters whenever you're putting something into a magazine, okay? So you will build launchers, and we'll talk about this. You will build missile launchers, and they will have a size. That size is an MSP, okay? So if you have uh, a size 20 missile launcher, okay, that means that you need you can house a size 20 missile or lower. You cannot house 20 size 1 missiles, okay? One launcher to one missile. This is a requirement. However, you can put a size 20 MIRV in there and then fire a very small missiles from that MIRV, okay? So consider that. Whenever you're considering about designing any ship with missiles, you need to consider what the point is. My recommendation is that you should never use a standard of size and uh, size and reload rate. You should always use my personal favorite is the 40% much lower rate of fire. And you may be asking yourself, well, if I if my rate of fire is so bad, that'll be terrible, will it not? Yes and no. The number one thing to understand in the war of combat with missiles is that you either get through the point defense or you do not get through the point defense. If you do not get through the point defense of the enemy, then your missiles are worthless. Okay? So what this tells the player is that they need to build large, large salvos to ensure that they will be able to penetrate. So my recommendation is either use reduced size launchers so that you can reload, or use box launchers. Reduced size launchers and normal launchers, uh, stand size and, and, and whatnot, can reload from an internal magazine that you add onto a vessel, or onto a station or whatever. Box launchers do not have an internal reload mechanism, but are very, very, very small. Uh, and this makes them very good at these alpha strikes, which we talked about. They can only be reloaded in hangar decks or maintenance facilities, so you will most likely see them used on uh, fighters that have very small footprints and need the space savings, but obviously will use a hangar to reload, so it's a win-win for them. It takes longer to reload at a maintenance facility than it does to take out a hangar reload uh, area. Keep in mind, maintenance facility reload doesn't mean that they're getting the ordinance from the maintenance facility, it just means that they need a planet with that on it, and they need a uh, ordinance transfer station uh, at as well as the actual launchers, uh, all that, all that good stuff. As well as the actual like uh, ordnance on the planet. That is. So that, that's something that's very important to consider. Okay, uh, I I recommend box launchers or the point four size because you you know you you lose you know twenty five percent more size. You you gain twenty five percent more size gains, but you lose you know five times increased reload. So I would honestly have these or these depending on what you want. All right. So now that we kind of understand missiles and we understand that and, that, and that and we kind of talked about some of the uses, um, my recommendation, I'm going to put this in the description, is when you're first starting out with missile design, check out the optimizer, the missile optimizer made by Ice Ranger in the description below. He's done a great job. It's very useful. It's very handy. I'll put that on screen right now that you can see. Um, and I enjoy it quite a bit. Um, other than that, I would recommend tinkering around with things. It's all a balancing act. Like many things in the war, you're going to be balancing between your war strength, your fuel capacity, your agility, and consider, you know, how effective would your own missiles be against your own ships, and are they actually that useful overall? Do you want to go for a two-stage missile strategy? Do you want to go mines? Do you want to go just mass swarm missiles? What do you want to do? I hope this video has been helpful. I hope you guys have enjoyed uh, the tutorial today. Again, more on Cut Raw, just me talking about uh, missiles, talking about how they work and, and, and kind of the, the buttons and the knobs around them. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys next time. Please don't like, comment, subscribe. It really does help me out. And uh, goodbye.